Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News on iTunes, Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, we've seen mentally tough fighters in the past. Let's talk about mental toughness. Let's name names. Right? You've seen guys who are mentally tough. Let me give a few examples. Right? A fighter goes to his opponent's home country. Right? The crowd is rooting for the opponent. The fighter doesn't panic. Right? He doesn't get too excited. He's there. He's able to go all out. His stamina is not drained by the crowd dynamic or the pacing. He's able to go 12 rounds, fight hard from start to finish, even when the fight lays in the balance late in the fight. Right? That's Leonard Bundu, a fighter I consider to be mentally tough. Right? So, of course, when I look at future Leonard Bundu fights, I'm going to know this guy is a calm customer under pressure. Another idea of mental toughness is when a guy suffers hardship in a fight but doesn't get too phased by it. So, right in one fight I saw, in fact, one fight I think most of us have seen, a fighter facing a faster handed, harder punching opponent. Got decked three times in the first round. Then of course, Juan Manuel Marquez got off the canvas after the third knockdown, proceeded to outbox his opponent over the remainder of the fight, earning himself a draw in his first fight against Manny Pacquiao. In a fight that turned out to be disastrous, have a terrible ending. I once saw a fight where Nigel Ben literally got knocked out of the ring. And while the referee was counting, Nigel Ben climbed back into the ring and went on to win the fight. Right? For the rest of Ben's career, whenever I saw him, I always thought this is the kind of guy who will go out of his way to beat the count, right? Other examples of fighters being mentally tough are when they suffer an injury. That many fighters would say, hey, that ends my night, but the guy hangs in there, right? Eddie Chambers recently had a fight where he tears a pec muscle and couldn't use one of his arms. So, of course, what does Eddie do? I believe it's against Tomas Ademek. He uses his other arm. He uses his other arm, comes back, and wins the fight. Sorry about that. There were some video problems. Eric Morales against Marcus Maidana. One eye is totally closed. Totally closed. Marcus Maidana is a big puncher, always on the hunt. Eric Morales fighting a younger lion with one eye counters Marcus Maidana to death and almost pulls off the upset. I'll give Marcus Maidana credit against Victor Ortiz. Understand, Maidana then was new to the United States. He gets decked by a big puncher early, gets off the canvas, then does his own decking. Right? You know those guys are mentally tough. Now let me give you the other side of the equation. Fighters who aren't mentally tough. Right? Or who, you know, have anger management problems. Right? I was watching a fight once. I think many of us were. A fighter was upset that his opponent was able to get inside. It was a rematch of a big upset. So the fighter bit the other fighter's ear. Referee Mills Lane then allowed Mike Tyson to continue in his fight against Evander Holyfield. So what did Tyson do? 
He proceeded to bite Holofield on the ear again, folks. It was the second ear biting that got Mike Tyson suspended in that fight, disqualified in the fight. Right? We've all seen it. Andrew Galata, Riddick Bowe. Galata gets DQ'd in the first fight for excessive low blows. What does he do? In the second fight, he gets DQ'd again for excessive low blows. Right? When you're dealing with a fighter who you know lacks some mental strength, right, loses it emotionally when he's under pressure, you need to realize that things like that are going to happen. It's really odd when a fighter actually has a chance in a fight, but is so mentally fragile that he just falls apart. That's what happened in a fight that happened a few hours ago between Brandon Rios and Diego Chavez. Right? Say what you want about Brandon Rios. He's mentally tough. Right? He's the kind of guy who can get fouled in a fight. Right? Hit with low blows, hit with late punches. Right? And he keeps coming. Now contrast that with Diego Chavez. He's a curious fighter. I would say he's not mentally strong. He's not the kind of guy who when I'm just thinking, well, what column should I check? What does this guy have going for him in this match? Chances are I'm not going to check the mentally strong box for Diego Chavez. You know, Diego Chavez was competitive in this fight. In fact, at the time he gets disqualified, he's actually up 75-74 on two of the judges' scorecards. He had a chance to win this fight. And keep in mind, he was the underdog. He actually had the better legs than Brandon Rios. He actually showed us that he had a back foot game that I, quite frankly, before the fight, didn't think he had. Right? That surprised me. But understand, Diego Chavez earned this disqualification. He really should have been disqualified. First, he engages in illegal clinching of the forearms of Brandon Rios. Understand, there's a way to clinch. You you're not allowed to clinch in a way that could throw out the guy's elbow. But yet, Diego Chavez is clinching dirty, at least according to referee Vic Draculich. Right? Draculich actually gives him warnings. Chavez keeps up with the clinching. Then, of course, we have really something I thought was just outright egregious could have easily been disqualified. There's a moment in this fight, folks, where he literally takes his glove. This is really lacing. He takes his glove. Let's say this is the glove. He turns it this way. I'm not kidding. Then he puts it up on Brandon Rios's face and tries to cut him with the tape portion. I'll tell you what, if I were the ref, he would have been gone right there. That fight wouldn't have continued. Understand, it's not incidental. It's not like the guys are throwing punches and he has a hand up and Brandon Rios walks into his glove. That's not what happened. No, this is a deliberate foul. This is akin to Victor Ortiz headbutting Floyd Mayweather. Right? The fight gets a little bit rough. Brandon Rios is, you know, having some success. Diego Chavez is frustrated. What does he do? He tries to maim Brandon Rios by lacing him. Right? Literally, there's tape over the laces these days, right? But literally, he goes like this and tries to rub out his face. 
we're just lucky he didn't pull off a lot of skin right here on Brandon Rios. So I was watching the fight and I was a bit shocked because it was a competitive fight. It was a bit surprising. Right? I was wondering what Chavez was doing. Keep in mind, he had already gotten a point deducted. Then we get to the coup de grace. Something that was so outrageous, I can tell you I have never seen it before in all the years I've followed boxing. Right? Chavez, who must have been feeling Brandon Rios' body attack, and let me just say, I would question the scoring. I thought the fight was competitive, but I thought Rios was ahead. Right? The problem with a sustained body attack, and Marvin Hagler would know this from the Ray Leonard fight, the problem with a sustained body attack is the body doesn't snap back like, let's say, someone's head snaps back. Right? If a fighter hits you in the head, Right? I believe the crowd can see it more. We see chin shots. We see a neck snapping back. Right? That's the kind of thing that draws a judge's attention. But body shots with a poker player. Right? A guy who gets hit in the body. It could be a devastating body shot. But the guy's able to bluff better, right? Because nothing snapped back. His head hasn't snapped back. He gets hit in the body. His body's going nowhere, right? Guys who can play off body shots sometimes can fool the judges and the crowd. I thought that's what Diego Chavez was doing in this fight. I thought he was getting worked over with body shots. I thought Brandon Rios was doing some great work with body shots. I thought the body shots had given Brandon Rios the edge. More importantly though, understand body shots deplete your stamina. Diego Chavez may have realized, even as he's looking tough, that he wasn't feeling tough. He may have realized that his body was killing him. He seemed to be looking for a way out. What he did is he literally, it looks to me, grabs Rios in a headlock. This is not accidental, in my opinion. It's intentional. He grabs Rios in a headlock, and then he decides to do a wrestling move where he falls to the canvas with Rios in a headlock. Diego Chavez, this is not the WWE, right? This is boxing. It's not wrestling. I didn't go to a boxing match or watch a boxing match hoping that a UFC contest would break out. It was completely ridiculous. More importantly, it was dangerous. I mean, as they hit the canvas together, I was worried that Rios might have severely hurt his neck. Now, Brandon Rios was taken to the hospital after the fight. Rios, of course, because he's tough. Right? Rios is mentally tough. Rios just laughed it off. Gets back up. Folks, it's shocking. I personally hope that a sanctioning body, in fact, forget a sanctioning body, because you know they're hopeless, I personally hope that a boxing commission looks at this closely, right? It looked like a deliberate foul to me from a guy who, quite frankly, I think's a punk, right? I'm so unimpressed with Diego Chavez, I can't even put it into words here. And you all know I like to talk a lot. That takedown was simply ridiculous. So put me among those who, moments later, when Draculich finally decides to disqualify Diego Chavez, put me among those who thought the disqualification was not only appropriate, I thought it was overdue. 
right? This flight is really exhibit number one on a lack of mental toughness, right? Diego Chavez is in the fight. I actually was watching the feed with Bob Sheridan and Larry Merchant, the top rank feed, right? They had Diego Corrales, excuse me, Diego Chavez. In fact, I shouldn't besmirch the great reputation and name of Diego Corrales by confusing him with this loser. They had Diego Chavez in the fight, right? But yet Diego Chavez mentally wanted out. He wasn't ready. This is the opposite of Leonard Bundu, Nigel Benn, Juan Manuel Marquez, Eddie Chambers, Eric Morales, Marcus Maidana. Right? This is the opposite of that. This is a guy who decided, hey, I'm having a problem here with these body punches. How do I find the off-ramp? Right? Next time, Diego, why don't you just tell your corner to throw in the towel? Next time, why don't you just call over the referee between rounds and say, hey, no moss. I'm out of here. I'm hitting the off ramp. Don't try to injure or maim your opponent just because your rib cage is killing you. I'm going to throw a red flag on this fly, uh, fight. Trust me when I say I won't shed a tear if I hear this Diego Chavez guy suspended for a year. It's an outrage. Honestly, I thought the lacing attempt was so flagrant, I was shocked. I thought, what could possibly be more absurd than this? And then, of course, Chavez does the wrestling move takedown that almost breaks Brandon Rios's neck. Simply outrageous. Just keep this fight in mind whenever I'm talking about mental toughness. Understand there's another side of the coin and let me just say in my opinion from where I sit Diego Chavez falls right in that category let me hear from you leave your comments for me here online visit us at gamblersadvisory.com thanks for stopping by